What's up, gang? Welcome to episode number three of segment one, which is pricing your home appropriately in today's marketplace. And uh, this episode is going over the CMA, the Comparative Market Analysis. Uh, now, we understand from the last episode, this is setting your home side by side with other homes like it, uh, usually of the same style, meaning uh, the same uh, construction type. Uh, we have colonials, we have capes, we have ranches, we have raised ranches, we have A-frames, we have, uh, you know, the list goes on ad nauseum. Um, but you really want to try as best you can to, uh, to compare apples to apples. And we're going to do it in four sections. Um, the first thing we are going to do is we're going to look at every sale, regardless of type of home, type of property, size, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, within about a quarter mile radius, whether it's sold, whether it's on the market now still, um, doesn't matter what is going on with this property, it was withdrawn, it didn't sell, um, we want to know what's going on immediately surrounding that home. Um, it's not going to weigh as much as a sold comparable of uh, an identical type of home if we're looking at a home that didn't sell and it's a different style home and it's way smaller and, and all other things being unequal. Uh, but we'd like to know about that home that maybe didn't sell next door or the home that did sell for a ridiculous price across the street even though it's completely different. Um, the buyers in our market will have this information as will um, the real estate professionals on the buyer side will have that information as well. So, you know, it's good to have uh, answers for questions when people show up to, uh, to your residence about what went on across the street. Maybe you know, maybe you didn't know. If you've got your eyes peeled and you're, uh, you're staring out your window every day at what, what's going on in your neighborhood, maybe you caught it. But, you know, a quarter mile in the other direction, uh, the buyers are doing their research. They're looking at what's going on uh, very local to your sale, even if it may not be exactly the same type of house. So we want to look at those things. Uh, second, what we're going to do, the, the, the second of four, uh, we are going to look at the most uh, solid, the highest fidelity information, which are uh, sold comparables. Um, now we know exactly what it sold for, when it sold, how long it took to sell, uh, what type of house it is, all the photographs of the house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This, this is sure knowledge. Uh, however, while it is sure, it is also the oldest, right? So we're looking... Today, generally speaking, we're looking at about six months into the past at, at comparables. We don't really want to go too far into the past beyond six months because the market's been very dynamic uh, post-pandemic. Uh, prices have been rising, falling, rising, 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 falling, rising. And uh, we don't want to be weighing comps too far in the past that would cause us to have a, a glitch in our, in our pricing matrix, so to speak. Um, and again, now, uh, looking at sold comps, we are going to take homes of the same kind. Let's say today we're looking at a 2,000 square foot, three bed, two bath, a colonial on a half an acre. You know, very, uh, very common property in, in most suburban areas in the United States. Um, and we are going to compare your home, which we just described, to other homes of the same kind. Now, what does that mean? I mean, not every home... Uh, is the same and certainly not even close to the same in most cases. So where does, where do we draw the line? Where do we end? And it's, it's generally speaking, you know, within one to three miles, as long as you're not crossing any town lines or state lines. Um, and within 30% of the square footage above grade, above the street level. So if we've got, as I described, a 2000 square foot, three bed, two bath colonial, uh, those are, you know, multiple story, usually two stories above the ground. Maybe there's finished basement space, maybe there isn't, but the, uh, the square footage as it is understood by the wider market is just the square footage that's above the ground. Um, in lots of advertising platforms and lots of MLS databases, there are fields that would list and describe below grade under the street level uh, living or recreational, can't necessarily be living space, but recreational space, common space, utility space, storage space, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it is not as heavily weighted and, uh, and not um, generally taken into account when recorded in, um, in public manifest. Um, so now let's say we've got five homes that are around the same square footage within 30% of, uh, of the square footage. Um, so what would that be? It would be 2,600 square feet at the top and it would be 1,400 square feet uh, at the low, we're looking at those homes. Generally speaking, we'd like to see the same number of beds and baths. 
um, around the same amount of property. And then we're adding and subtracting value based on different features. Do you have a detached two car garage on your property? You know, that's worth quite a bit of money. Um, is that attached two car garage um, with utilities? Does it have water and electric out there? Um, is it just a garage with, you know, a manual door? Does it have an opener? Um, you know, is there a workshop in there? You get the idea, we're adding and subtracting value. Um, now let's think about other infrastructure um, items that you may have that, that are um, different and unique. You know, maybe your house is connected to municipal city uh, water and sewer or town water and sewer, or you have private on-site waste management systems, you know, septic or, um, or, or cesspool, something older like that. Uh, you know, again, we're, we're adding and subtracting value. In the case of something like a cesspool, let's take our, our local area here in Rhode Island, Massachusetts. You know, this is the sort of thing that has to be corrected uh, either before in Massachusetts, in the case of Massachusetts, or immediately after a sale in some cases in Rhode Island. Um, you can't let that cesspool sit there. So, you know, that's a dollar sign that the, the incoming buyer now has to figure into the sales price. They have to come up with that money potentially either uh, right before or during the contract period or right after uh, the sale to, to turn that, uh, that cesspool into a septic system adding and subtracting. Um, now we're looking at deferred maintenance or, you know, is the home very well maintained? How old is the roof? How old are the windows? How old is the heating system? How old is the air conditioning system? Um, plumbing, is it all modern PVC? Is it all old copper? Uh, we're looking at things like, uh, you know, in, in some municipalities, lead lines in the city, you know, if, if it's an older city and they used to have, um, you know, lead water, water pipes, water systems, um, has it been corrected all the way into the street or, you know, is the buyer going to have to be worried about uh, you know, lead poisoning and things like that. Speaking of lead, how old is your home? Is it built before 1978? And could there potentially be the presence of uh, lead paint somewhere under the, uh, the more modern layers of paint? Um, all of these things taken into account, there's, there's just innumerable items and, and fields that, uh, you know, professional uh, listing, um, a listing agent would go through in, in trying to appropriately price your home. Um, now let's, let's get off of just the property's characteristics and we'll look at um, the comps characteristics insofar as uh, what price did they sell at? What price were they listed at? Meaning did the, did the home sell above or, or below asking price? And how long did that take? Um, in today's market, in this local area in, in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, in Connecticut, it's still a very hot seller's market. So if the property had been lingering for you know two months, three months on the market and couldn't find a buyer, um, and then started to have some price reductions, clear what happened. You know that property was overpriced, um, and the market did not like that uh, that pricing structure. Uh, and in the reverse, if it was on and off the market in a day or two, um, we can understand that you know it was probably underpriced, and you know there could have been some money left on the table there by um, by not asking for enough and letting the market bid the price up from there, uh, you know, really squeezing every last drop out of it. Um, so we're going to take those things into account in our pricing structure. And also, as sort of uh, alluded to in, in previous installments here, you kind of got to take the temperature of the buying population in, in your local area. So again, taking Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts as an example, Buyers are exhausted around here, guys. Um, you know, you are a very well qualified buyer. You're putting a heck of a lot of money down. Um, you're out there shopping for homes and you're losing bids over and over again. Uh, you're going $20,000, $40,000. I had a colleague of mine uh, just last week lose a bid after the property their buyers made an offer on um, went over $100,000 over the asking price, over the listed price. Um, this particular buyer had waived inspections. They were offering uh, $10,000 appraisal gap, which you know we can touch on that concept in another video. Um, and they were uh, just unbelievably well qualified buyers. They're doing everything they could uh, to get this property and, and, and still lost the bid. So when you're pricing your home in that type of market atmosphere, you can't even be three thousand dollars priced over exactly the value that the comparables prove um, where your value should be for your home so if if the comps are 
let's say $400,000 and you go out to market at $415,000, $405,000 in some cases, people just won't show up. They're so exhausted from continually overpaying and, and, and still losing bids. Um, meanwhile, interest rates continue to rise and uh, it gets tougher and tougher for buyers out there. Uh, if they feel like you're being greedy as a seller, even by a very slim margin, people just won't call. And you eventually are doing price reductions after a certain period of time. Now your home's out there on the market longer than it should have been, and you have a price reduction. The optics of your sale have been shot full of holes, and you're, you're in, a, in a bad way right now. Um, you really need to be careful to price your home exactly where the comparables prove value so that the market says, you know, yeah, this is a, this is a reasonable asking price. Whether or not it stays reasonable is another question. All the buyers show up, all the offers show up, everybody's bidding against each other. You know, we're um, in some measure here exploiting human buying psychology by, uh, you know, this guy wants it, then I want it more, and the price goes up. That's what you want as a seller, but it's, it's a little tricky getting there, right? You really gotta take a lot of things into account. So far, we've gone over macroeconomics, um, we've gone over assessing your property's unique features. Now we're doing the comparative market analysis. Next, uh, in the next video, we're going to think about uh, changes and characteristics in your local market atmosphere that could also have a dramatic effect on, on how you want to price your property. Uh, so if you're enjoying the content so far, like and subscribe down below. Something you uh, think I missed, please feel free to comment and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. I'll see you in the next video.